We are confident that we have built the best smartphone on the market. That's the kind of braggadocious boast so common to phone releases that folks, I usually don't even bother to write it down. But when it's Samsung saying it, I take note. From Samsung Unpacked in Brooklyn, New York, I'm Mr. Mobile, and this is a first look at the Galaxy Note 9. Brought to you by Dbrand. Let's be honest, it's tough to be surprised by a smartphone in 2018. And you know, the Note 9 is no exception. If you followed the leaks, they were right on. The most notable physical changes here are the slightly larger display compared with last year's Note 8 and the relocation of the fingerprint sensor. Now that's funny because last year Samsung told me it had to put the Note 8's fingerprint reader way up out of reach because to move it lower would necessitate a smaller battery. Well, the Note 9 must have some black magic baked into it because it not only puts the fingerprint sensor where it belongs, it also increases battery capacity by 21%. That's a 4,000 milliamp hour power pack inside, the biggest Samsung has ever built into a Note, which makes me hopeful that this phone can improve on the lackluster endurance of the Note 8. Still, it needs to be said that Samsung is playing catch up here. Huawei's Pro Series phones have packed 4,000 milliamp hour batteries for the past year, and they're some of the longest lasting phones I've ever tested. Then there's the camera tricks. The Note 9 can automatically recognize subjects like food and adjust camera settings for the better shot, but we've already seen similar features from LG, Huawei, and others. So let's talk about the thing that only a Galaxy Note can do. While a few other phones come with styluses, the S Pen has always been special, both for its accuracy and its feature set. This year, Samsung has kept all the old features and added even more by giving the S Pen its own power source and Bluetooth. That means you can use the S Pen's button to do things like remotely open an app, by default the camera. Check it out, you long press it to open, double click to switch between front and back cameras, and click once to take a photo. There are also options for music control, controlling presentation software, and unlocking the phone remotely. That's not the exciting part, though. After all, you can do the same remote control stuff with a smartwatch. The cool stuff will hopefully show up down the road. Samsung is planning to offer an SDK for the S Pen, which means developers will be able to write their own features to take advantage of the new hardware, assuming any of them do. And the engineering accomplishment of that hardware deserves a quick word. I mean, Samsung squeezed a supercapacitor and a Bluetooth LE radio into an S Pen not much bigger than last year's. It charges inductively when it's docked, it lasts 30 minutes on one 40 second charge, and yes, if the battery dies, it still delivers on all the old S Pen features. Remember, none of the prior ones have needed onboard power. Also, both pen and phone are still water and dust resistant. There's plenty of features in the Note 9 that only a full review will be able to uncover. The camera has something called flaw detection, which should be able to tell you if your subject blinked or if you're out of focus or, you know, if something's happening in the background that's going to ruin your shot. Samsung also built a new carbon fiber cooling system around the processor, which is meant to preserve performance even under a heavy load. This is a big deal. I remember seeing PUBG played on a Note 8 a few months ago, and I remember thinking such a powerful phone shouldn't be bogging down so much. The new processor and cooling system should help with high demand games like Fortnite, which is finally coming to newer Samsung phones as of today. And the rest of the spec sheet, from the high RAM count to the dense storage options, well, they'll help with everything else. Heck, if you can find a 500 gigabyte SD card, you could have a terabyte of storage in your hand with this thing. And your hand doesn't need to be all that much bigger either. While the Note 9 is still a very large phone, it's surprisingly close, at least in terms of hand feel, to the Note 8. Of course, it's still just as easy to smudge as any all-glass smartphone, so before we get to pricing and availability, I'll drop a mention of a name you really can't hear often enough, can you? Dbrand delivers premium vinyl skins in up to 25 different finishes to give you the power to craft a custom color cocktail unique to your smartphone. Thanks to Dbrand for sponsoring this video, and you can get yours at the link in the description. 
And where can you get your own Note 9? Well, the phone will be available in stores starting August 24 for a penny shy of 1,000 US dollars. That's for the 128 gig version. The 512 will run you the princely sum of $1,249.99. Yee! Now, there is a small break for you. If you pre-order before August 23rd, you'll get your choice of a free pair of AKG headphones or the Fortnite Galaxy skin. I don't know what that is. I'd probably go for the headphones, but you do you. And let me know what you think of this pricing too, folks. Magic? Tragic? Drop your thoughts in the comments below. And please be sure to hit that subscribe button so you don't miss my own thoughts on whether it's worth it in the full Galaxy Note 9 review coming soon to Mr. Mobile. Till next time. Thanks for watching, and stay mobile, my friends.